Hey Moon Magic family, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. In today's readings, because we are fast approaching May, so we are asking spirit, no holds barred, unfiltered please, clear, direct information, what is happening for you in May? Let's have a look and draw three cards first of all, along with three runes and charms too, just to guide you in. May we please have three cards please for three readings. What is happening in May with very, very direct and clear information please. Very direct, very clear information. We have one and two. And may we have another card for reading three please. Clear, direct information. Okay, so reading one. We have snake. Kundalini rising. Okay, can you see that? Beautiful image. Okay, reading one. Reading two, we have squirrel. Spiritual maintenance. And reading three, we have swan. Graceful transformation. Okay, so let's draw some runes and then we will draw a charm each as well. Okay, one, two and three. So reading one, you have Othilla, the rune of inheritance, separation and inheritance. That's what's happening in May. Reading number two, you have the blank rune. And reading number three, you have Burkana, the rune of growth. Okay. And then. Okay, so reading one, you have the charm of the turtle. Reading two, you have I think this is a treble clef, a music, a music symbol, a treble clef. And reading three, you have a butterfly. Okay. So my beautiful souls, I am going to leave the video running a little bit longer. Uh, sit with your intuition, tune yourselves in. We really are asking for unfiltered, clear, direct information. What is happening for you in May? Tons and tons of love, super souls. The timestamps are in the description box and also, of course, in the comments. I'll put one like a pinned comment for phone users as well. And just find whichever reading or readings are speaking to you. And of course, you can always cross watch as well for family, family members, friends, loved ones, partners, potential partners, if you wish to as well. Tons and tons and tons of love. Hey, beautiful pile one. We have Othilla, the rune of separation. We have the turtle and the snake kundalini rising. Channel your creative passion and sensuality. Welcome the transformation. What is so interesting in your reading, my beautiful souls, is that we really are seeing a complete transformation. Unadulterated, unfiltered, clear, direct information. What is happening for you in May? This is what we are asking from the universe, from spirit. And with the rune of Othilla, separation, inheritance, it's like, it's not just like you kind of leave something behind or you let something go. It's, it's the whole process from the release of something to the point where something new arrives. It becomes consolidated. There's a massive transformation between from one zone to another. And with both the turtle, because the turtle is about the new, it's about climbing onto dry land. You know, in native traditions, the turtle is the beginning of, it's the point where people who were uh, people, creatures all of life that were out at sea in the big flood, 
the turtle said, climb on my back and I will become the earth for you. I will become the solid ground for you. It's the place of new of a new home, a new found, uh, yeah, a new anchor point. And literally I say a new home because actually sometimes this rune also relates to real property. Like you move from one house to another. Yes, there is the letting go or the release of something. But there's also the acquisition, that is the right word for you, acquisition of something new. So I'm seeing this phenomenal kind of transformation where you not only shift from one place, from like if you wanted to get from A to C and you have to do B in the middle, we see that proper completion and transformation. Okay, so we're seeing beach. I'm going to use that card because that is what we're seeing. How interesting. There are three people in this card and I feel like this is this three stages of transformation. We're seeing this, um, this is wilting, you know, these leaves are wilting and it's like we move from one thing that isn't entirely working, we transform and then we arrive at a place of completion. May we ask what else do we have here for our beautiful pile one? May we have more information please? What do we have for our beautiful pile one? You have music. Okay, we will uh, draw a couple of tea leaves. This is such a big pack. I love though the way that they just slide out and we can just choose a couple of tea leaves for you. Mm. There's just so many cards in this pack. It makes it really big, really big to shuffle. Okay. You have bread, period of prosperity and abundance, and you also have teardrops, great personal sorrow. It is very, very interesting because I do actually feel there is a definite letting go and an acquisition. So I'm kind of seeing both the indication of both of this. Indication of both of this, letting go of something. It's curious. What is the great sorrow? We will ask because... Yeah, I mean, perhaps this transition is not necessarily going to run completely smoothly, but I also, f it has a real feeling of liberation, like this, this music, this imagery. It's kind of, it has a feeling of liberation, of freedom about it. This is a theme that has been coming out in some of the readings recently. And it just seems to me to be really aligning with, there's so much astrological energy with the eclipse season, uh, you know, with two new moons we've had both in Aries. Um, you know, we are now in eclipse season. I mean, everything is about rapid transformation in many ways, in so many instances. And as we move into May, that is kind of the energy that we're looking at. We have one card. I'm going to draw two from each of our tarot packs here. Yes, let's take this card. Let's have another two here. May we have information for our beautiful pile two. What is happening in May? Really clear. Just say it how it is, please, Spirit. <laughs> Let us know. I always want to say both barrels. Let's just let's just go there. Let's just see how it is. Let's go there. Let's know what's going on. Okay, so we have the seven of wands. Okay. We have the ace of pentacles. Wow. Okay, I'm seeing you making some really clear-cut choices here. We have Eight of Cups. We have King of Wands. Yeah, again, it's it's kind of like re stepping into your power and getting direction. We have Eight of Wands. So we have Seven of Wands. We have Eight of Wands here. Two Eights, Eight of Cups as well. Ah, and then we have the five of swords here. I'm seeing you really, really choosing to actually, again, to walk away from something, making a very clear cut choice about something here. Let me see if I can get your tea leaves still showing up, but with room for our, our cards to be in view for you. Okay. Beautiful pile one, what is happening for you in May? is I think exactly this. It is a transition from 
something that is uh, wilting, lingering, not really working, something that actually, I, I don't think the sorrow, it's very interesting. I don't think the sorrow is that you're leaving something behind. It doesn't feel like the sorrow of loss, actually. It feels like the sorrow of, do you know, something isn't working and it's been giving you great personal sorrow. And really now you just kind of know that it's reached that point where you can't really stay like it anymore. You can't keep feeling like you're out at sea, bobbing around, you know, and then along comes this opportunity, Ace of Pentacles, like this log floating past you in the river or in the water, um, and it's or the turtle coming along, and it's like, you know what, climb on my back and, and I will give you a new beginning. Look at you finding your way through this water it's like the parting it really does feel like a bit like the parting of the waves the direction being ever so clear to you very curious because i almost feel as though also something may instigate this what i also see is a massive degree of compassion coming in you know with with beach so, something is not working Okay, we've got this really wilting kind of branch here. It's something that, you know, you might have wanted it to be beautiful, forthcoming. I mean, this is this is the energy that is here. There's like a flow of energy in your reading. And that flow of energy is very much about moving forwards. It's like the recognition and like the wake up call almost that actually you really can't do this anymore. You know, when you know, when you there's there's kind of I want to almost say you can't see the woods for the trees. Look at the trees coming here. And then this shifts to a place where we have this wonderful kind of oak tree with all of these lights, these little they look like little fairies and nymphs in the roots here. Can you see this kind of reversal here where it's like the the branches, the twigs, the ones that all in the darkness. And then suddenly there is this light up moment where you just kind of think, you know, I mean, this is the Kundalini rising. It's like the energy coming up through your, your chakras, coming up through your center. And you just know, I, do you know, I really can't do this anymore. I can't continue in this way. I feel with this card as well, with snake, um, let me move that beautiful charm. You have this eye right at the, there's these cards here and you have this eye right in the center. It's literally like your chakras align, your emotions align, your, your mind aligns and you just kind of say, do you know what? This isn't working. And this is what the energy is. It's like it really isn't working and therefore I have to leave it behind. Now, what I feel is that it, it could be something that literally is in the way of you being able to be in a period of prosperity. It could be something that's blocking you from being able to do something that you really want to do. The shift in the energy is huge from twigs coming out of darkness and this sudden flame, kundalini flame. But with the Ace of Pentacles, something coming along that causes you, with the turtle, an opportunity that says, come on, let's actually make this, let's make this new beginning real. Let's consolidate it. But what I do want to say is, on the one hand, it may feel as though it is there may be sadness, I think, around that, that you're having to walk away from something. But of course, ultimately, you're walking to something, okay? And you may need to adopt some compassion, some kindness about the fact that something isn't working out. Sometimes we even feel a little bit guilty when, when we move away from something, even if we know we shouldn't really have an obligation. But there's something about that around. But you kind of become empowered here. It's like your roots are now lit up. Instead of like trying to follow a single flame amidst the darkness, you are empowered from the roots upwards. You take charge. Maybe you fight off some kind of demon here as well in a way that you're empowered to move something forwards here. 
And indeed, that possibly, I think, really does mean choosing to close the door on something, to walk away from something. But with great clarity of direction, the, the emotional bit, the teardrops, I do feel, pile one, that part of the teardrops is yes it's sad to move beyond i feel like there's more of a sense in empowerment and prosperity and potential because something i think something then builds and comes to you very quickly once you move away from something or you let go of something so in a way the teardrops are less about the loss and more i think to do with how it's actually feeling right now it's like this is why you have to go away because something over here is giving you anguish it's giving you tearfulness it's giving you sadness and therefore there's a need to move away there's far more sadness and sorrow around where you are at the moment with something than where you're going to be which is like this place of liberation and freedom when you actually transform you accept the transformation you welcome the transformation and you make a very clear personal choice to be extremely clear to move your life forwards not to be um remain in something that that doesn't work for you I'm seeing a very clear moving out of this sort of space of darkness, literally where you can't see the woods for the trees, you don't know what's going on, beyond the fact that you know that something isn't working. And rather than keeping on trying and trying and trying to kind of like uh, keep your head above the water to keep swimming or what's um you know when you're swimming and you're uh, what is the name of the, I'm trying to think what the name of that is when treading water that's it when you're treading water I feel like you've been treading water because something's been wilting it's been you know it, it's almost like you keep trying to tend to something but you're tending to something that actually has come to the natural end of its life yeah, very, very interesting, very interesting energy here. Hmm. With this transformation, I feel like I, I think I'm going to draw some more cards for you, beautiful souls. We are seeing compassion, we're seeing kindness. So I, th I think there's relevance in just kind of checking out if there's going to be a little bit of choppy waters, how that's navigated and, and, and if there's any advice and guidance about that. I clearly, clearly see an invitation for something, something coming along and saying, literally, metaphorically, like the turtle, climb on my back. Let's make this real. Let's let's build a new earth. Let's build a new world. Um, and seeing you then celebrating that new world and seeing you know, prosperity and abundance and a lot of motivation returning, energy returning. But I am curious as to what it is that brings in this kind of ace of pentacles, this log floating down the river and there you are treading water in deep water and the currents are all over the place and you're just feeling like it's, it's never going to get fixed. Well, I'm not sure it is ever going to get fixed. And so actually it's you make a choice. You climb on the back of this log and you let it take you to a different place. But you do actually somehow manage to also then take very clear directive action within that. So it's not even simply like a log floating downstream and you just see where you end up. You're taking very clear direct, directive, directive actions as well. Let's draw some more cards. So what is this? What is this turtle, this gift, this turning point? What is this gift that lights the flame, gives you whatever it is you need to say no to something, to separate from something? Okay. Well, we have the fool. Oh, how very interesting. Right. So the energy around you is of complete and utter new beginnings. It's going to be something that feels like it's a risk, isn't it? You know, the fall is a card of, you know, when you just, it's like you've heard the calling of your soul. You desperately want change, but you're pretty scared about it, but you've kind of got to do it. It's like putting yourself out on a limb. 
you've got to take a risk. May we have more information, please, about this, please. For reading one, what is this about? What do we need to, what does reading one need to know about this risk? What is this taking of the risk? The stepping into the new. Okay, so we have four of swords. Okay, do you know what I'm going to say about this? Let sleeping dogs lie. Or in fact, in this instant, let sleeping gremlins, giants lie. Okay, we're seeing a new dawn over here. Leave something be. Leave it well alone. Choose to, if, if it ain't working, don't fix it, but don't hang around it anymore either. <laughs> it's really, really clear. If you can't fix it, don't try to. It's not your problem. This really is a, a choosing to walk away scenario, literally. If there's conflict that somebody else is generating, just leave it alone. Not your problem. It's kind of like literally, it's not your problem. And I think it's a, it feels like a risk to walk away from it. And I'm not sure why it's such a risk. We'll ask some more information. But for some reason, it feels like you're stepping into really unknown territory to just choose to kind It's like let sleeping dogs lie. Leave it alone. Walk away. Get on with your own world. Do something that's right for you. Mm, how interesting. May we have more information for our beautiful pile one. May we have more information, please. Here's your card. The Empress. Mm. Now this is interesting because the energy of the Empress is the energy of the mother. And with the Empress energy, if you think of the, the mother energy, it's like, I mean, for some of you, this could directly relate to a mother or a mother figure or a female figure in, in a position of authority you know, because she's kind of sitting on her throne here. Pillars of, I want to say pillars of convention are coming through here too. You know, if you think of the high vibrational energy of, of the Empress card, the high vibration is about really, really healthy boundaried mothering. It's about nurture, bringing something forth. But the negative vibration of the Empress energy is, is like about not cutting the apron strings. It's not releasing someone. It's someone never leaving home. It's somebody, um, you know, not letting go of, not being able to let go of that connection. Yeah, very, very interesting energy. I, I feel there is something that it's, it's like, it, it's, it's never going to get fixed and you could go round and round and round in circles. It's kind of like being an observer, recognizing that this is just no longer tenable. And then what is interesting, so we know that you have an opportunity to make a choice here. It's a very personal choice, great personal sorrow, but it is personal to choose to leave and walk away. Teardrops are wonderful because when we cry, we heal. We release emotion. We're no longer keeping it inside. I, th I think there is a very personal choice. To, it's like to cut those apron strings in some way, shape or form. Now, because there is a transformation, we know you have choices here. May we ask, please, um, about those choices or, we, I mean, we can see this is happening. This is really saying, I think, that there is a situation that can't be fixed, so don't try and fix it. An acceptance with compassion that you can't change it. What's that saying? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. You can just choose to leave it well alone and walk away. Absolutely walk away. Now... Where are you walking to? Where is your focus shifting to? How interesting. Four of Swords. Now, what a different Four of Swords this is. Just look at the way this reading is panning out. We have this real sort of look, just leave it well alone and walk away. And then we have this beautiful lamb. This space of possibility. This, you know, it's as if your mind becomes 
pure innocence there's a, a like a sun within your mind whereas actually and you can see the sun that you're walking to here in this four of swords where you leave well alone this is like something that might previously have tormented you or been conflicting for you or that you felt stuck with it's kind of like it no longer bothers you. you it, you're able to just remain true to yourself and not be torn to some, by something. It's like there is a sense of not being compliant. Not being compliant, walking away with great clarity, doing your own thing, holding your own thoughts, holding your own vision, holding your own vibration. choosing to do climb on climb on board the turtle and build your own world hmm. may we have more information so tell me what is this about for my beautiful haha -ha, ten of swords yeah look at this it's kind of saying i'm no longer be going to be i'm no longer be being prepared sorry excuse my words no longer prepared to be stuck between a rock and a hard place I feel like somebody's been holding you to ransom almost back to that negative maternal energy where sometimes someone won't cut the apron strings. Whatever this situation, there could even be money hanging over you. You know, when someone, it's like staying, at, a bit like never leaving home. Staying at home is the cheaper option because you haven't got to pay rent or you haven't got to pay bills or something like that. But it is so restricting. There's no sense of freedom or aliveness. You can't sing your own song. You can't just go out and invite your own friends home. There's all these restrictions around you. I'm not saying that that's just the exact situation, but there's something around this. And actually, this is sort of saying, look, you know, just walk away here. You, and because I, what I feel is it's not even as simple as something that's quite practical, like staying at home because it's a cheaper option. Because actually, you know, sometimes that's exactly the right thing to do. But it's kind of like that's being used as a sort of a, as a tool of manipulation to keep you there. Right, there's a massive difference between consciously sitting down in a family as grown up adults and saying, look, you know, the best thing to do is to stay at home, save up your money, da 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 da, so that when you do move, you know, you've got all this behind you. That's completely different to someone saying to a child, well, I really don't think you should go out there. You, you'd never be able to afford to do that. And just think how awful it would be. And you could find yourself with no food on the table. And, and you know, like making it like a big emotional deal. And really the agenda is holding on to them the agenda isn't it might appear to be supportive but it's not supportive whereas the sitting down and saying look how can we help you you know if we if you save this much you know we'll be able to like get your own place and done. there's a massive difference between choosing to stay somewhere because it's it's really thriving and healthy as and it's nurturing something of the future as opposed to staying somewhere because there's because you're being maneuvered and it's about someone's agenda to stop you from growing and stop you from moving and that's what we're seeing it's like you've been stuck between a rock and a hard place with people maneuvering around you and it needs to come to an end and this is what we're seeing in your reading in may and i'm not saying it's you know there'll be maybe a little bit of choppy waters because it's you're not used to walking away and saying no you're used to this these there's some connection to where you're what the thing you're leaving and even though i think you've really got to a point where you think this really isn't working it's a big deal to sort of to leave it behind but what is fabulous we see this period of prosperity and abundance it's almost like the moment you make that decision your vitality returns your vitality returns your spark returns and the moment that spark returns the energy shifts may we have one more card for beautiful reading one where is this going may we see where this goes in terms of letting go because we do see prosperity abundance may we have a card to see where this is going for beautiful reading number one may we have a card for reading one please yeah that is your card okay the card of justice mm. okay 
Yes, the card of justice. I feel like this is such a turning point. Such a, it brings back balance. What's really interesting, as well as your period of prosperity and abundance, I think what will happen is, you, you know when you are, okay, going back to that same analogy, okay, where we, we sort of look at somebody who's, I'll, I'll use it just because it's a good example of the energy in the reading and the flow of energy in May for you. But you know when you are, let's say you succumb to those sort of, to those, conversations that imply to you that life would be really really hard should you cut the apron strings and go out and rent somewhere and find your freedom and liberation and you just remain stuck and stuck and stuck but ultimately somebody else's agenda is at play this is kind of like where you suddenly escape and you discover that that was a complete fantasy you really realize it wasn't true by liberating yourself prosperity comes to you suddenly your energy is clean and free and and your mind is clear and you can be creative you can channel your creative passion and sensuality and you can welcome the transformation and just because your own vibe completely changes instead of being tangled in somebody else's energy you realize that you've been blindfolded all this time you know, you realize that you were blindfolded to the reality of potential possibility. This also for me is telling me timing wise, this needs to happen. And my dear pile number one, the timing of this eclipse season as we come into May is absolutely primed and perfect for this to happen. I think for some of you, there's been a lot of fear about challenging this situation. It feels like there's a bit of an ogre, you know, here. And actually, you know, I, I kind of don't think it's going to be quite as bad as you think it is. Okay. I really do feel, even though you might experience it with quite an intensity, almost like, gosh, if I go out to sea, you know, I don't know where I'm going. It's that element of the energy of the fall. I don't know where I'm going. I'm getting my little coracle. I'm paddling out to sea. I've chosen to leave the mothership. <laughs> you know what I'm saying anyway. And I'm paddling out to sea and I have no idea. And it's such a big risk, but I can't stay with this anymore. And, and, you know, there's so much anxiety and fear about challenging this situation. But suddenly when you do, along comes the turtle. And, and it's not interesting, you, you just, we're seeing like, like a life raft coming along here. The Ace of Pentacles. Something just is activated so quickly. And you realize you've kind of been blinded by stuff. You didn't have to do this. And it, I, I don't think it's going to be as bad as you thought it would be. I mean, look at the difference in these four of swords. It's remarkable. I think I'm going to draw one more card for you, beautiful pile one, just as a kind of an outcome. Because I really do feel we're, we're being shown here for you. And it is very hard, unfiltered, as we asked, unfiltered, clear, direct information. And the clear, direct information is very, very clear. It's leave this well alone. You can't fix this. You can't revive it. No amount of nurture and water will make this and will make this grow. It's not going to grow. It can't happen. It's time for a new beginning. This is quite hard hitting. And even though you are anxious about walking away, when you get there, you will realize that all that heartache and grief you gave yourself was unnecessary. You've been blinded by this impression of a need to stay with something when it was never going to be as bad as you thought it was if you left. It's like your coracle floats out to sea and suddenly just everything in, that you need kind of arrives. The turtle pops up, says, hey, jump on my back. Let's build a new world. Let's Let's draw one more card just as a kind of an outcome for you. May we have one more card, one more piece of information for pile one, please. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> I, I just have to just laugh. Look at that card. I, I was laughing before I even read that it was celebration. I just saw all the color, all the vibrancy, all the aliveness, the aliveness, all the prosperity, all the everything you could be dreaming of 
manifesting the vibrancy, the excitement, the life. Life force returns, celebration, prosperity. Honestly, whatever you have been able to not been able to do because of this current circumstance anything anything and everything is now possible is now possible it's like you move from restriction and it's not exactly impossibility but restriction and constraint and clinginess to complete and utter freedom liberation prosperity and abundance my beautiful reading one people this is your reading I am absolutely loving it. I am sending you all the love in the world. This looks to be like such an important May for you. So it was clear we asked for no holds barred and I think we got it. But wow, tons and tons of love to you guys. Um, don't forget to subscribe, press the little bell icon, keep a look out for the video if you're on my any on my um, YouTube subscriber email list, and which means you're in my draw my monthly draw for a free private reading and some oracle cards that i give away every month um that by the way is a, a subscriber offer so you have to be subscribed to be part of that and i will put the link to join that email list in the information box as well as the comments um and just you know uh, all the other links that may or may not be helpful to you but scroll down have a little look there'll be stuff there that i hope will be helpful to you you know timeless readings playlists that answer specific questions um, i do post readings a pick a card reading with specific information and questions on a tuesday a friday and then every sunday as well i post a reading for immediate personal practical guidance and looking at the week ahead so you know just check in with anything that's feeling right for you my beautiful souls Tons and tons of love reading one. Hey, beautiful reading to welcome. You have the blank rune, which is loaded with possibility. Now, we really are asking for seriously clear, no holds barred, unadulterated, clear, 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 direct information. What is happening to you or for you in May? This is a card squirrel of spiritual maintenance. It's about balance and squirrels are kind of amazing because they're really, really, you know, they, they work, work, work. They're always like preparing for the winter, storing nuts and doing all kinds of things that are all about, you know, preserving things for the future, which is really, really important. But they also kind of forget a lot of the time where they've buried their nuts, you know, so they don't always find them. You know, it's like they, work, they can work so hard that they lose touch with what they've actually been doing and, and therefore they don't get the full benefit of it. They'd be better off working slightly less frantically and actively and actually main, keeping a hold of the resources they have in some way, shape or form. They are also delightful because Amidst all of that, they never ever stop playing. I mean, have you ever seen squirrels not be leaping around in joy as they are working as well? They, they kind of, yeah, they have a real attitude of joy, an attitude of gratitude. I mean, it's, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous energy. So, and we have agrimony as your first card here as well. Let me... Let's put this up here so that we actually can see where our cards are going. The blank rune is really interesting for me because it's a, car, a card, it's, it's not a card at all, it's a rune. Um, <laughs> it's a rune of possibility, you know. So what are you being asked to really connect with in terms of possibility? What do you want to build? What do you want to make? And can you do it in a way that will be in balance? And, and can you have fun while you're doing it? And also, I, I suppose, with agrimony, it, I feel like this is a card that sort of says lighten up a little bit. And I, it doesn't mean let go, it doesn't mean let go of, it's not like the squirrel just going on vacation and, and deciding to have fun, fun, fun and never storing any nuts at all, <laughs> kind of thing. But it is also about, gosh, letting some of the the tension relax a little bit, taking off the mask you wear a little bit, not completely, because actually sometimes we have to be defended, don't we really? I mean, that's, it's important to be defended a little bit. Ah, oh, we have trust. Now, what is this about? Ooh, 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 I am now very, very curious about where you might be having fun in your life um, and being able to trust that 
that kind of stuff will be okay if you don't yeah if you don't have a massive close hold on everything maybe let's draw a couple of cards here i'm seeing this one here for you we have good advice from a wise person we have owl mm. yeah and this one and basket recognition reward for merit okay that's really nice that's a really really nice really really nice card or really nice cards so i do feel here that you will get some recognition look at the colors as well here the same and there's so much yeah there's a lot of autumny colors coming through here and autumn is a time of harvest I think you're going to get recognition and also recognition in a way that comes in where someone says, do you know what? You've worked so, so hard. Take a week's holiday. Here, have a bonus. Go take a week off or here's a, here's a spa day or I don't know. There's something about giving you something. Someone coming in and saying, do you know what? You've been amazing. So how about you enjoy it? You know, it's no good work, work, work. If you never, ever, ever take the time to enjoy your life, someone bringing you in some very good and sound advice. Okay, so no holds barred. Unfiltered information for reading two, please. What is happening in May for reading number two? May we have clear, direct information for reading number two, please. Clear, direct information for reading number two. Hmm, which of those is it? We'll shuffle more. Clear, direct information for reading number two, please. Clear, direct information. There it is. We'll take the one at the bottom there. And may we have clear, direct information for reading number two, please. What is happening in May for reading number two? What do we need to find out, to know about, to be aware of? What is happening? Okay. Super nice. Let's have a look. So you have Ace of Pentacles. This is absolutely extraordinary. I mean, I have put these cards right back into that pack in different places I have shuffled. These came out in exactly the same position in reading one. My beautiful souls, if for some reason you were attracted or drawn to reading number one, you may wish to visit that reading as well, if you haven't already. We then have Knight of Cups, but th this is a different reading, but there is something really, really exciting. <laughs> okay, there is a connection between the two, but I'm not going to say any more for those of you that might have been drawn to that. We then have Queen of Wands and we have Five of Pentacles. Okay, this is really interesting. Mm. What is happening for you in May? Let me be very, very, very clear. We did ask for unadulterated, unfiltered, clear, direct information and it's here. Right. I feel like there is something that is to do with your personal life, your friendships, your it's it's to do with your relaxation, your personal life, your your fun time. Something is coming striding into your world, Knight of Cups energy. Look at this horse. It's like and the, and this uh, the page of even the page of swords here. There is a, a hawk, an eagle, and this person is working with this hawk, this eagle. He's this bird of prey. He's going to let them fly. This, this bird will fly free and it will come back to him because it wants to. Okay. It has the freedom. They work together. Okay. So <laughs> let's bring this one into being. Wow. This is really fascinating. Your card's just fascinating. Something is coming or someone is coming or an opportunity is striding into your world. And he, he, this energy, this energy, let's look at it as energy. This energy is striding into your world with something that feels 
passionate, alive, vibrant, and there is an opportunity to really work with this. They, you know, these, these guys work together in harmony. Okay. Now, trust. However, this, however, this energy is arriving. I think it is, it's a major opportunity, Ace of Pentacles, okay? It's a major opportunity that can really bring passion, aliveness. You can see the woods through the trees, as it were. Uh, your, there's, there's choices become available to you. There's empowerment, there's opportunity. You leave behind um, any emotional fears or difficulties. Good advice from a wise person. But it must be in balance. And most importantly, you're going to have to trust this possibility. Okay? Something being given to you. This is the bit that maybe connects a little bit with reading one. But, but in this instance, advice from a wise person. Someone striding in now. I think this could be, it could be on, go two ways really. It could be someone who comes in and offers you a working opportunity. You can work with them. And this can really lift you out of a, it can take you to a place of recognition and reward, but be sure not to dive in and let it be all consuming to the point where you don't enjoy your life. Really important to keep your, be your own caretaker, keep your life work stuff in balance. Don't just put on a mask and feel like you have to be, step up and be, you know, 600% of everything that this working situation requires of you. They'll be quite happy with you just being you. Okay, you kind of got to learn to trust that you're good enough. If for some reason you are already working your socks off and someone comes in and gives you an opportunity, they want to align with you and they actually want to take you away from work. They want you to enjoy your work a little bit more. And, you know, they're kind of saying to you, look, you don't have to constantly fear the loss of money. What's the point in having money and working all the time if you never, ever, ever get to enjoy it? You know, trust that you can relinquish some of that hold on a way of doing things that kind of are rooted, I think, in some kind of insecurities. Something is striding into your life, literally, that is so vibrant, exciting, passionate, alive. Something that can be, be really, really real for you. Keep it in check. Keep it in check. Let's ask more about this. May we ask, reading number two, what's all this about? What's striding into your life? What is happening in the, in the lives of reading number two? What is this kind of, this opportunity firing up for you that's coming in and looking just amazing? Okay, so we have the... Four of Wands, how interesting, because the Four of Wands is a card of celebration. It's sometimes a card of like a commitment to something, like a, sometimes it can indicate like a, an engagement or a commitment, yeah, commitment to something. So an engagement, a union of some sort. How interesting. Put those to one side. So something, somebody comes in with an offer of something. I do think this is really fascinating. Okay, what do we see around this? Okay, Ace of Wands. My goodness me, you've got Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Wands. Do you know whether this is work or it's a, a personal relationship or a friendship group or something? This is something that fires you up. It makes you feel so excited, so good about life, so good about potential, so good about possibility. It's like a squirrel finding this sudden stash of that somebody else has already made. It's like this stash of acorns. They haven't got to go rooting around for them all, but now they've got to work out how to go and bury them in all these different places in order to keep that, to have that stash. And actually that's gonna overwork them. 
okay so they've, they've kind of got to get into a place of trust that they can bury enough nuts for the winter and it will be okay and also that they can maybe take them take their little masks off their squirrel masks and they because they're quite competitive i don't know if you've ever watched squirrels when they're together they are often they they chatter they argue quite a lot and they they are very very playful they're also a little bit territorial over their nuts and things like that you sit 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 down and just watch a group of them it's great fun to watch we can learn so much from those magical um, magical lessons that animals teach us this is going to fire you up yeah passion 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 so whether this is something in your personal life coming in or it's a job offer do you know whatever this is you are fired up about it however it needs to be navigated in a way that it's totally in balance do you know it really needs to be balanced and your advice your guidance aside from what's happening in may is something very 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 exciting arriving some major opportunity for reward, for merit, for balance, for recognition, temperance. It must be kept in balance. Whatever you do with this, it needs to be kept in balance, in check in your life. Okay, temperance, very clear. It's got to be balanced. It does feel very sort of like, um, kind of like divinely guided. So I reckon it's an important, seriously important connection, union, contract, friendship, uh, yeah, whatever it is, partnership, um, personal friendship, uh, job, career, otherwise, soulmate, connection, calling, all these things, all these things are coming to mind. Keep it in balance, keep it in check. Part of the not keeping it in check, and this is one of the really unfiltered, clear, direct messages is, part of your holding on to, well, overworking, is your fear of not having enough. There's always, there's a bit of anxiety or fear of things going financially wrong or feeling that there will be instability. Your reading is saying, look, trust. What you need will come to you. What you need, you'll be provided for. What you need will come to you. You'll acquire more by letting that mask down, not letting it go completely. We always need to be thoughtful about, you know, we all wear, it's not so much different masks, but we wear different hats in different settings. So, you know, you don't want to let your guard down in every setting because you would put yourself in a very vulnerable position. But there's a time and a place to take your guard down. You can't wear it all the time. So we're seeing very, very big happenings for you during this time, especially with the blank rune. I mean, this is like a space of massive potential and possibility, but it's kind of like, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with this? Because I, I, I'm concerned that if it's not in balance, you know, sometimes things can backfire really, can't they? If, you, if it's all work, 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 you might end up having great success on the one hand, but actually still being, you, you could still be deeply unhappy because your personal life doesn't feel fulfilling or vice versa. You could be so embroiled in, you know, a, a new, the new love of your life that you put work down and, and then, then you feel like you haven't got enough. So it's got to be in balance. Everything here is about balance and your active being an active participant in that you have another ace wow wow's a wow you've got ace of wands you have ace of pentacles and now you have ace of swords everything here is is pointing to a massive new beginning a massive opportunity may we have more information about this opportunity this new beginning what is this about okay Eight of Wands, how interesting. Look at all the runes. I said to you, I felt this was really, like there was a real flavor of, of destiny, fate and destiny. How interesting. And look at all the animals around her. Wow. You see this? And actually I've just noticed, can you see there's a labyrinth here? 
So these um, stakes are here and, and they have all the runes on them. And then there is a massive labyrinth that she is coming out of. Okay. That is very interesting. I'm going to draw one more card before we dive into this. How fascinating. I think that is your card. The Hanged Man. Ha. Mm. Okay. This is very, very interesting. What, what I feel we're being shown here with the Ace of Swords, the Eight of Wands and the Hanged Man is that something in your world that has felt quite stagnant or stuck for a while is actually about to take off. <laughs> okay, we've got three aces, Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Wands, Ace of Swords. It's about to take off. We have the infinity symbol around this sword here. And it's big. You know, when I said there's something striding into your world here, I mean, look at this card, this Knight of Cups coming in. Whatever this offer that comes in or whatever this opportunity, you know, it's like there's an opportunity for you to find significant, um, whether it's financial freedom or joy, it's like, you know, you're finding the right, your tribe, finding your soulmate, finding the perfect job or the, finding something that you feel with a passion. Okay, something is striding in here. Balance it. Keep it in check. Do you know when something amazing comes into our life, especially if it's something you really, really wanted, especially if you've been feeling like it would never deliver or it would never arrive or it would be, you know, it's stagnant, it's never going to happen to me. You know, it's challenging, isn't it? Because it presses those buttons that say, well, what if? What if it doesn't work out? Da, 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 da. I better fall back to my usual, you know, work, work, work situation or whatever it is. Don't fall back to those patterns. This is full of abundance, recognition, reward for merit. Whatever strides into your life, let down the mask enough to be able to have it and enjoy it, not just work for it, have it and enjoy it. And whatever you are manifesting, whatever possibility is arriving in your world, and I think it's big, it's marching in like nobody's business. However, however this arrives and whatever this is for you, slow down enough to enjoy it, to see it, you know, the hanged man as well. You've got to slow down and smell the roses, okay? Not be so in such a flurry of activity over it or overthinking it to the point that, you know, it, it's, it crushes it. I'm pretty excited. Uh, whatever it's, whatever, I, I just, all I'm seeing is this incredible vibrancy coming in and look at this Ace of Wands. It, it's just amazing. I, in many ways, feel like something is landing in your world that feels like an opportunity of a lifetime. I don't know what exactly that will be, beautiful pile too, but it does feel with the blank room that it is an opportunity of a lifetime. This is a time to seize it, but not at the expense of your existing world. And likewise, it, it's like to seize it... Um, to seize it in a balanced way. So if it's a work opportunity, you don't embrace it to the point of being all encompassing so that you don't have any other life. If it's your other life, you still keep your work commitments going. You don't get so emotionally um, in turmoil over this new, op this new love or this new circumstance that you, um, you're not grounded at the same time. It, yeah, everything here is about balance, 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 and more balance. Let's draw some more cards, or a more card for you. May we have a little bit more information about this. But you know, I'm not going to use this yet. I'm going to do another. May we have a little bit more information about this. We know this is clear, 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 balance, balance, balance. May we have more information about the kind of outcome of this. 
Okay, how interesting. So we have the Five of Swords. May we have more information, please, for reading too, please. And the star, how beautiful, how beautiful. Okay, and next, last but not least, let's just draw one more card from this pack too. May we have one more piece of information for reading to Quest, ah, okay, wow. Okay, do you know what the Five of Swords always says is, it comes back down to keeping everything in balance again, especially with the card of the quest and the star. I feel like whatever comes striding into your world, it feels like a dream come true, okay? There is a great importance with the Five of Swords really clear information to not, I want to say, bite off more than you can chew, okay? And by that, it's very interesting, we've got two halves of a worm kind of cut in half here. And so it's about balance. It's about that recognition with the Five of Swords. It's all about managing life through clear, clear thinking, clear, dedicated timing, not overloading yourself to the point where you make mistakes. I think your quest, your mission, and it feels like a quest and a mission pile to you, your quest and your mission for May is to embrace whatever lands in your world. And when I say lands, I don't even feel like it's landing. I feel like it is striding in with boldness just going to get that card out because if you have a look at the colors of it in comparison to the quest card <laughs> look at this look at the colors of that it's striding in but the difference here is this is vibrant striding in with so much life so much vitality so much love so much passion with the quest it's like don't don't lose sight of the enjoyment of the doing of it you know, the quest, the star, the joy of this experience is it's the actual doing of it. It's not just the end goal. You're going to get recognition. You're going to get reward for merit. You're going to get that basket of abundance. That's coming. But, you know, this is something you're going to love. This is something you've wanted. But embrace it in a balanced way so that one part of life doesn't let slip on the basis of another, because this is such a big opportunity for you. It is a huge opportunity for you. Don't let it be in conflict. Slow down, smell the roses, treasure the journey, treasure the process. Be realistic with your timescales on whatever it is you want to deliver. And that means spending time with a new social group or a new partner, a new lover or, um, or a project or a job not at the expense of existing partners and lovers or whatever, however this is, that it, however it lands in your world. Timetable yourself and give yourself the time you need to not do it at the expense of another part of your world to have it with joy, with fun, with laughter, total ownership, but in a balanced way so that everything else is running smoothly as well. With all the aces, this is a biggie arriving. Whatever it is in your world, it's a biggie. You've been searching for it. And it's one of those moments when it's like, boo, bingo. It's just arrived, it's just happened. It's that offer of a lifetime or something sparks and, and it runs, it goes viral or it does whatever it does. This, this energy has been coming out in a few of the readings recently. You know, there's been different flavors, different hints of this. And I, I think it's just because that's the, the, 
there's so much astrological energy around shift and turning points and openings and possibilities, including releasing stuff that's in the way, but then new stuff landing. Yeah, reading number one may have been relevant to some of you. Um, if it is, this does follow on beautifully. Taking down the mask. Be human. You don't have to achieve everything. Be human. You don't have to achieve everything. And part of the not achieving everything and not being perfect is also part of the recognition and the abundance that comes. You know, how amazing a role model is that for anyone if you are keeping your world in balance? Because that's offering that permission to everyone else as well. And this is so exciting, whatever this is, in, this is in its, you know, arriving in your world. So pile two. I just want to say have the most amazing, the most amazing May. I believe it will be for you. I really, really do. It's like, it's like it's going to resonate with you. This is something you've been energetically pulling in. And now's the time to actually have it and work out how you're going to integrate this amazing absolutely amazing thing into your world in a way that allows the rest of it to still run smoothly and for you not to be overloaded at any time with any given area of your world so everything is in check and there are people here to support you indeed if this is a person they may, may well be striding in with this amazing opportunity recognizing you and also saying giving you the advice you need to not overload yourself and to keep your life in balance. I do feel it's really interesting. And if that is the case, I think you can trust them. Okay. There's a real sense of trust from a wise person as well. Advice being given. And we have the card of trust. Dare to risk trusting somebody who has your best interests at heart. Beautiful pile too. I am loving, loving, loving your reading. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing. Um, if you're on my um, at my uh, subscriber email list, watch out for the uh, winner's announcement. I may already have made it actually, in which case by the time I upload this, because I've actually recorded it just before I did this reading. So depending on what I upload first, check out that uh, winner's um, video because I give... Um, I give away a free private reading and some oracle cards as well. So do check those out. And um, if you're on my subscriber email list, and I will put the link in the information box below. Um, Super Souls, um, I am just sending you, well, so much excitement for May. Uh, I just feel, this is just feels like it's, it's loaded with, um, I mean, just look at this card, guys. Just look at it. Just looks incredible. Um, yeah, I'll put all the relevant links to anything and everything that I do and put into the world and playlists and extra stuff that might be helpful to you and the names of all the cards and all that stuff in the description box. Do scroll down and check it out in case there's anything you want to join or connect to or find. I'm sending you all the love in the world. Have an amazing May and beautiful pile too. Hey, my beautiful reading number three souls, thank you for joining me. You have Burkana, the rune of growth, you have a butterfly and you have a swan. I am already feeling with your reading, there is the most beautiful, that's your card, gentle, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like gentle, penetrating, um, it's got lots of movement about it kind of energy, but gentle, penetrating, um, as if like you're being, it's a bit like immersing yourself in a salt bath and allowing the energy to just um, infiltrate every cell of your body and just for something to be cleansed, healed, regenerated. Um, it feels very beautiful, very cleansing, very strong energy as well, but strong in the most um, nurturing, flowing kind of way. The fact that we have Serato and the swan energy 
graceful transformation, soften your heart and find your flow. Serato actually asks you to trust your intuition. So I'm kind of wondering, what are you actually navigating through? What is this transformation that's taking place? I do feel reading number three, we have asked, and to be fair, we've been getting the information, reading one and reading two, I've been asking unadulterated, no holds barred, really clear, unfiltered, how is it happening? What's happening in May information, clear, direct information, and it has been incredibly clear in the other readings, really clear, strong messages. May we have the same for reading number three, please. May we have clear, clear, clear direction, clear messages for reading number three, please. Okay, I'm going to take the card that popped out there, letting go. Look at that, would you? Okay. Mm, that is very, very interesting. Let's draw also then some tarot cards. And actually, do you know what? I'm gonna draw your tea leaves first. Let's see what, what, you know, this is definitely your card on the top sliding around. Victory in some endeavor we have. Okay. Well, that's super nice. I'm seeing this card here for you. Claw, be careful, do not take risks. Yeah, you're navigating something in May. I'm gonna find out more information about it. What we see is a victory but I, you're also being asked to approach this uh, gently, okay? Gently, gracefully, find your flow, soften your heart, don't push for something, okay? Which is really, really interesting. I, I sort of feel like you'll be guided through this. I, I'm kind of really seeing something like a you know, like the way a river comes bubbling down um, a hill. If, if the, the white water rapids, that's what I'm seeing. I feel like you can get stretches of river where sometimes they flow beautifully slowly, beautiful, deep, crystal clear water. Um, and then you get these patches suddenly where the, the water is really turbulent and it's like the, the rapids and things. And then there's another bit that's kind of got some flow in it, some steady energy. Um, really reminds me, I, I lived many years ago, I lived in I lived in New Zealand for a while and lived under Mount Rapehu, literally at the bottom of that. And there was the, uh, I think it was the Wagapapa River actually, it was beautiful, but it, it was exactly, that's, that's the river I'm seeing here. It was like beautiful stretches with water holes, crystal clear, like turquoise in places, the water. You could just dive in, you could swim, it was very cold. Uh, very icy cold, but you could dive in and yet literally around the corner there would be a, an area of real turbulence. And there's something about, I feel like that, that's what you're navigating. And actually the way to navigate those bits of turbulence is to soften your heart and let the river guide you. <clears throat> it's almost as if if you allow the river to guide you, you trust your intuition, you trust the flow, don't take risks, you know, don't go hurtling off at pace, you know, don't pick up a paddle and try and go really, really fast through the, you know, the gentle bits, just take your time. And it's like, it's like work with the energy, work with the river, because whatever you're negotiating, we've got a victory, okay, so this is really cool. We've got a victory here in some ende endeavor, but, and we have this fabulous rune of Berkana, growth and the butterfly, but you need to navigate this with grace, peacefulness, good heart, okay, intuition. This is definitely a time to go with the flow and be responsive rather than trying to control and work out your pathway, as it were. You, ca you, can't, you cannot work out exactly how to navigate a river like that. You've got to be responsive in the moment because depending on the weather and the water coming off the mountain, and it, it's going to be changeable every day. It will never, ever, ever be the same. However many times you, I don't know, you water raft down there, it's going to be different every time, even though there'll be areas that you know well. 
it will be different every time. Let's get more information for our beautiful pile three. So we have two cards there for you. Lovely. May we have more information for our beautiful pile three. May we have more information. No holds barred. What's going on? What's happening for pile three in May? What do pile three really, really, really need to know about, be aware of? What can pile three be shown at this time? Seriously clear information, please. That's what we're asking for. Okay. Right. Wow. So we have the Ten of Wands and then we, <coughs> excuse me, then we have the Ace of Cups. Well, that's pretty groovy to start with, I've got to say. I mean, what a massive transformation. What a massive, massive transformation. It's like the Ten of Wands is, is a place of, I don't know, excessive responsibility, overburden, feeling weighted, carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. And then you have the Ace of Wands. Oh, look at all this energy coming. Soften your heart, find your flow. What is all this about? We then have the Four of Swords. Okay. Okay, then we have the Knight of Swords. Can you see this? So I am seeing here for you, beautiful souls. What we're seeing is a monumental, absolutely monumental shift in the energy around you. Moving from a place of absolutely feeling overloaded, burdened, in a really kind of just like, I don't know, exhausted, had enough place, to a place of feeling revitalized, absolutely fantastic, uh, vibrant, alive, passion, just fab. But you need to take it very slowly, very, very gently, very, very slowly, almost methodically. Okay. Now the Four of Swords traditionally is a card where, which asks us almost to kind of get still and meditate, like, because that's how you'll see the answers. Get still, kind of like, do you know, like sleep on it? That's what I want to say. If something bothers you or there's something happening that feels like it's in the way. So let's use that metaphor of that beautiful river. If you can see some rapids ahead, you know, maybe you need to pull ashore and then have a little recce uh, and then sleep on it before deciding how you're going to approach that. Because I'm seeing you treading carefully here, gingerly almost. This Knight of Swords here, he's got the energy and the power of this incredible bull to take him through and look at the stalks here, or the herons, the stalks. This is about new beginnings, Ace of Wands. So take it really steadily, one step at a time, okay? Don't rush because you need to not, yeah, don't, uh, you need to take, don't take risks with something. So if you're investing in something, take it one step at a time, do your research. Then we have the Hermit, and then we have the Two of Cups. Now this is indicating some form of collaboration and partnership. You're moving from a place where you're, I think, doing something on your own, to doing something in partnership with someone. If you have any kind of contract to sign, we're seeing a victory. But be careful, don't rush and sign the first copy. Look at the details. Check out the information, tread gently. Sleep on it, think about it. Dwell on it, contemplate it, go away and yeah, do that research. We're seeing collaboration. What I think you're letting go of is A space of the energy around you is of, of you doing everything or of you being overburdened, of you carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders, of you going it alone and we're seeing a transformation to a point where your energy is completely shifted and you are working in unison with someone. The bit you're letting go of 
is to do with carrying too much, doing everything, maybe being a one-man band. However it is, we're shifting. But trust your intuition because whoever you collaborate with, whatever contracts you sign, you need to take it step by step. This sleep on it keeps coming through. Okay. May we please ask, do not take risks, be careful. What are we being shown with this transformation here? Be graceful, be compassionate, trust your intuition. What else may we be shown? Can we have more information? We've got some clear information, but we're asking for really unfiltered, give it to us the way it is kind of information. Okay. So what we've got here, we've got two cards come, that have come out. I'm going to use the one on the top here, which is the two of swords. Okay. So we're seeing decision making here. Okay. We're seeing decisions being made. And the two of swords can indicate a conflict. But let's, yeah, what else are we shown here? decision needs to be made find the flow look at the lay of the land may we have more information what is this decision about for reading number three please queen of pentacles okay i do feel for some of you this will involve some aspect of finance or health okay maybe both again contemplate it I feel like this could go, it's not so much either way, but even here we've got two little like wood nymphs sitting here. You know, like when you get, you get those depictions sometimes where you have like the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other. I mean, we've got two wood nymphs here, so I don't feel like it's got quite that contrasting energy. But what I do think is that there is a decision to be negotiated. And she's holding this pentacle very carefully and she's listening, look at how she's listening to them. She's listening to both sides of the story. She's listening to the information. She's trusting her intuition. Look at the similarity between these two figures, Serato and the Queen of Pentacles here, the beautiful golden hair. Yeah, she's contemplating, she's holding the pentacle in her hand and she's listening to her intuition. She's really contemplating what to do before she moves forwards. What I'm seeing for you guys in May is exactly that. It's about, it's about making choices in a very thoughtful, responsive, gentle, compassionate manner. Okay, navigating this very thoughtfully, very, very thoughtfully indeed. May we have more information. Okay, temperance. Yep, so again, you're going to be weighing up. There's going to be some kind of, like quite an important decision to make here, really. I feel, interestingly enough with you guys, and, you know, the energy at the moment, there's some stuff that seems to be coming up, like themes that are coming up in quite a lot of my readings at the moment. And I think it is just that we're in eclipse season. We've had, you know, two new moons in Aries. You know, it, it's just the astro energy has been loaded for new beginnings, for shifts, for insights, for awareness, for new beginnings, letting go of stuff. You know, so, so we, we are really seeing vast amounts of potential. But sometimes there's some um, quite big stuff to process within that potential. Decisions to make, choices. Now, I actually do feel for you guys that the decision that, that you have to navigate, to a very great extent, I think it is coming because of external circumstances. You know, some of the other readings... You know, like when you sometimes in a reading, you get the full card, for example, and it's like, you know, you can take a risk. You have a choice here. Are you going to procrastinate or are you going to take a, le a leap and go for it? This is not the case for you. 
For you, I feel that you have to make some choices here. You're in a position where you really do actually have to. Circumstances are such that you do actually have to make a choice because this is a, a situation that is becoming a burden. The energy and the feel of it around you, it's becoming a burden. It's too much for you. So soften your heart. The purpose of it is to give you, a, to start a new chapter in some part of your life. But just take it gently. I feel there's the potential because of this, soften your heart, find your flow, be careful. I do feel there's the potential because it feels really hard work. I think there is the potential for you to sort of feel like you take the first option or you uh, you just you just say, oh, do you know what to hell with it? I'm, I'm doing that or I'm going to do that or I'm letting go of that or I'll buy that one or, you know, whatever it is. And it's got that feel of there's the potential for compulsiveness or a reactive kind of response rather than, yes, yeah, so a reactive rather than responsive. And I think that's because it's beginning to feel very weighted, very heavy, very hard work. We have this Ace of Wands, the new beginning is coming. Two of Cups, help is on hand, but you need to approach the flow of this in a balanced, measured, compassionate, intuitive, but also compassionate, gentle, graceful way. Okay, let's have a look and draw some more cards for you. What else are we shown for our beautiful reading three souls? May we have information for our reading number three pile. Okay, we have, I love this. Do you know, this came out in one of the other readings too, this Four of Swords. I love this Four of Swords and look at this one here. Both of these cards came out, I think it was reading one. Different, kind of different energy, but we're getting different scenarios coming through, but a very interesting flow of energy that emphasizes in the month of May, these phenomenal shifts that I think connect to the overall energy of eclipse season and the astrological stuff that's going on. What we see here is a balanced view. I, I kind of said, you know, sleep on it, stand back. Take it gently. This is really suggesting that you will be able to, you will be able to find, I, I want to say a pure way through this. Again, soften your heart, find your flow. Because I think something is kind of like either overloading you or bugging the hell out of you. I, I kind of want to say, you know, it's too much. It's like, I don't want to do this anymore. This is just hard work. I don't want to do it, you know. And because it's got that flavor about it, this card is saying to you, look, you know, don't be reactive. Take your time, be gentle. And you're going to be able to come through this in a way that kind of shines your light. It's like, uh, yeah, it shows that you have a purity in you. Because the more pure hearted you are, the more this is going to flow with grace and with ease, whatever this is about for you. May we have more information. I do actually feel it's that card on the bottom. We have Eight of Wands. Yeah, I think you will move through this situation. On occasions, it's going to be fast, okay? The energy will be fast. It's exactly what I was seeing in that turquoise blue water of the beautiful river, the Wakapapa River. It's the, there are places where things are going to move very, very fast. I think during May, sometimes things are going to be very speedy and it will feel as if a bit like they're happening to you sometimes. And, you know, that is how life is sometimes. And in eclipse season, things can happen very quickly. So if you're feeling like things are happening very fast, 
your reading is suggesting look sort of trust that the reason they're happening fast is with very very good purpose and the people you need will be there to help you part of this is almost to move you from a place where you might have previously carried far too much on your own to a place where now you are supported and you have other people on board as well. Whether you're working with someone or you have support at home or whatever this may be, we're seeing a shift. But the key is really that along the way, when it happens, when stuff happens quite fast and I think you could feel like life is happening to you, actually, the key is to, again to get still, get responsive, look at this through, through a peaceful lens, don't be reactive and sort of trust that um, spirit, the universe is guiding that river and actually you can embark on that river and you, you're going to get to your end goal and you will get there in victory. It's just got to, um, it's kind, I feel like it's got to work its way through even if it might bug the hell out of you <laughs> on the way. Okay, may we have another card for our beautiful reading three? Yeah, King of Wands, look at that. It is so beautiful. Truly, this is genuinely, if you think that we had the Ace of Wands showing up here right at the beginning, indicating where this was going to be going, you know, from the 10 to the Ace, and then look what we end up with here, the king. I mean, look at the energy of these two cards, along with this beautiful two of cups, where we have exactly the collaboration, the support, the love, the backup um, that you need, the peaceful outcome. You are going to come out of this seriously on top. It's just, I think it could be very fast paced. And I think that things could happen that feel as if they are happening to you. And the more that happens, you know, we, we end up, if we feel like the world is happening to us, it can really plummet us into those, into that space of reactivity because it's kind of like, you know, we, well, we feel out of control and it's really, really uncomfortable. But we are seeing literally victory. I mean, look at this. It, it's just stunning, these cards. I'm gonna just place them there, bang in the middle, really. Um, let's draw, in fact, Let's put those there for a moment. Let's draw another card for you guys to see. Can we have a sort of a confirmation? I mean, I feel your message is really, really, actually very, very clear. Your message is that May is going to be quite changeable, quite fast paced. It's going to have pockets that are quite turbulent. You know, I know that's a difficult thing to say in a reading. People often just want to hear the really, really good stuff. But actually, if you know it's going to be turbulent and that you're going to be kind of in a position where you have to make some choices, you're aware of it. And now you know to take it very gently. Reflect on this. Um, it does feel very guided, really. The purpose of this is to move you through and away for, to something. Don't do anything erratic or, um, or speedy. The world is going to be speedy enough around you at times. The key here is for you not to be speedy in response, for you to just navigate it with grace, with style, with gentleness. Yeah. And then we have the card of the fool. You are being guided to a space of new beginnings. Okay. It does feel like with the card of the fall that there is, a, it's, this is a different pack. To, this is not strictly speaking a tarot pack, but nevertheless, the energy of the fall is all about these new beginnings. What this card is really saying to me is that I think you are longing for something to change. And there's something that feels weighted, heavy, a bit of a burden, you're doing too much. You're longing for something to shift and move. I think it will shift and move in May. And I think those changes could be fast paced. Your reading is very, very clear. It's saying that the new beginning is coming, the new phase of life, the thing that you have been desiring is coming. However, it may not come or it may not arrive in 
the shape that you expected. It's almost as if the universe is orchestrating behind the scenes and it, you're going to get the new beginning you wanted. But it's how you navigate the process of the fast paced energy that is being highlighted for you. The beginning is coming. It's really interesting because the card of the fall is all about risk taking, but this says be careful do not take risks. So that might seem like a bit paradoxical, but honestly, what this reading is really telling you is not that you're not going to get that new beginning, but it's telling you about how to navigate the energy in order to get from A to B. Because actually the universe is orchestrating that new beginning for you. And because the universe is orchestrating this new beginning, you don't have to force it. Your role is to, to navigate with it, okay? You don't have to, yeah, you haven't got, it, it, I'll go back to the river analogy. Your role is to be responsive. And if the, if the weather is looking really rough or there's extra rainwater, I tell you that used to happen with that river. Um, and we used to know because we used to swim in it and um, beautiful water holes. But actually, if they opened the floodgates, like they would have floodgates higher up. And when the snow, when the snow melted, um, because the water was so, well, that the quantity of water was so massive as the snow melted, they had like kind of like floodgates to stop it all coming down in one go and, and sweeping away, you know, lots of soil and terrain. But you kind of needed to know when they were going to open the floodgates because actually there would be like a little mini tidal wave coming down. And, and obviously that is not the day you want to be out there swimming. So there's kind of communication, there's awareness, there's common sense, intuition in a common sense way. Actually, when you know that someone's going to open those gates, that's the day you don't go swimming. You pull up on shore and you observe it. And then when the water settles down again, you get back in again. But if you were impulsive and desperately trying to get to the end goal really, really quickly, and you, I've got to navigate this river, I've got to go from A to B, you, you would just disregard that information. And you might even get a little bit overconfident and think, I'll be fine. I can just like, I'll just ride the waves. I'll be okay. But you could end up in trouble. And all you actually had to do was step back and let that wave come surging through because everybody would be notified, you know, the phones would be ringing and people would talk to each other and you'd know that was going on. So there was no need to take that risk. All that mattered was that you got yourself into a, a good still observational place. So let go of the need to rush the transformation. We have the butterfly here. Do this, do this month with grace, whatever this is applying to within the context of your own world. The new is coming. Ace of Wands, King of Wands, victory. You're coming out on top here. You know, there is really, truly no need to be concerned. The new phase of growth is coming. The new life, the conflict, the decisions, they're going to work through in a really good way. Your job and your task, and this is so, so, so clear. We ask for clear, direct information. It's very clear. Navigate with conscious, peaceful, um, clear information um, from your heart. Be soft, be compassionate, be intuitive. And if something happens, don't be reactive, be responsive. If something happens and it feels a bit loaded or like the world's happening to you, press the pause button, step away, and then come back to it after you have slept on it and given it some thought, the answer will become clear to you when that river is safe again to navigate. It's really got that flavor about it. And if you follow those kind of, um, that clear guidance as to how to navigate from A to B, your passage will be a very, very safe one with the victory and the outcome of exactly what you are seeking. The key is the non-reactiveness and not trying to push it or hurry it or make it happen too quick. My beautiful pile three, I am wishing you what I believe will be an outstanding May by the end of it, but I also can see those turbulent waves and, but also clear information. Let go of the need to fix the outcome or the timing around something. 
The universe will orchestrate this beautifully. All you have to do is sit back, stand back, be gentle and respond accordingly. And ultimately you're going to be celebrating. So what is currently feeling like you're overloaded, you're going to get all the help and the support you need and your own vitality and your own position of authority will be really, really established by the end of this month. My beautiful souls, thank you so, so much for joining me. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing. Um, pile three, do watch out for my uh, video where I announce the winners of my monthly prize draw. I give away a free private reading and a pack of Oracle cards. And um, that is a subscriber offer. I'll put the link to join that subscriber uh, list in the um, information box, in the description box and in the pinned comment, along with any other links to anything else that might be useful and helpful to you as you navigate um, this month. Um, you know, I have a free online library as well with all kinds of stuff about psychology and emotions and handling your emotions and using the energy of emotion as a positive and a, as, as a source of empowerment. So to be fair, guys, there may be a ton of stuff in the library that is helpful to you, including meditations that help you manage emotions. So do check out all of those things i am sending you the biggest hug and all the love in the world and i look forward to seeing you again soon in some other readings super souls bye